Solar flash update, April 24th and 25th of 2023. We are experiencing major shifts. There's earthquakes that have been hitting us, volcanic eruptions, storms, tornadoes, flooding. And we need to talk about how this is going to affect our DNA. So we have been having, again, solar uh, flares, a uh, very strong G4 magnetic storm, which is hitting the Earth, creating these aurora effects as far south as New Mexico and France. So this is, you know, again, a once in a lifetime event, and it's happening when was, it was only a few weeks ago that it was doing the same thing. So, you know, two once in a lifetime events happening back to back. This is a huge solar event that is happening. So we are in a solar maximum where the sun, the magnetic poles of the sun are shifting. And when that happens, there's all kinds of uh, solar flares and coronal mass ejections, which if they happen to be facing Earth when it happens, this energy uh, comes and hits Earth. So we've also got uh, what's called, I believe it's called an incursion event where the electromagnetic field of the Earth is also shifting and it's much weaker than normal. So you've got this one-two punch of the um, magnetic field weakening and then the solar radiation uh, strengthening. You know, again, we had, we had another G4 um, magnetic, uh, uh, excuse me, yeah, uh, um, solar event, which is considered extreme, knocked out some uh, radio communications. It affects the earth in all kinds of ways. We see it in increased earthquakes because all of that uh, energy ends up being stored in the earth and eventually it, the earth has to release it and it releases it by earthquakes, volcanic eruptions. We've seen a volcanic eruption happening recently. And all of this happening while we're going through a major astrological event in and of itself. Jupiter is um, completely starting a new life cycle. So Jupiter has gone all the way through uh, the zodiac and just recently came out of Pisces. I think it's a 12 year event. It takes, takes a year, a year in each sign. And so this is a completely new karmic cycle. And Jupiter it has gone through a shift from uh, the deepest water sign to uh, the most powerful fire sign. And so it's a radical shift. It's, it's like, you know, it's a complete night and day. And so Jupiter is bringing all of the karma from the past 12 years and initiating a new dharmic path going forward for the next 12 years. So all the past 12 years has probably been the most corrupt, violent period in human history on all levels. We're talking on, you know, every single level stuff I can't talk about on YouTube. You know what I'm talking about. So all of the karma from that, all of the people who have been acting uh, corruptedly people who have been uh, untrue to themselves, who have been damaging the greed, the violence, all of those things, uh, Jupiter is now going to uh, bring his dharmic balance, which means karmic retribution for a lot of things. So the Earth herself is absorbing all of this energy, and um, we are seeing it, as I said, I mean, there's been raining here nonstop. There's been tornadoes in the U.S. There's been flooding. Um, the protests are still going on. All kinds of craziness. War in Sudan. Uh, there's now there's talk about you know more rumblings having to do with Russia and China and the United States. Um, it's probably one of the most volatile periods um, I can remember in my lifetime. So what is the solar flash? Well, the solar flash, as you know, is a period where the sun sends high vibrational spiritual energy, which will shift the consciousness of the planet. So I don't use the word solar flash because that's not what was told to me. 
Um, as you know, if you go back in time, way back in uh, July or August of last year, I was having daily um, visitations from higher dimensional beings. And one of the things that they told me was that there was going to be a worldwide uh, event that would be seen in the skies that would make people believe it was, you know, the end of the world, the second coming of Jesus. And then people would find out very quickly that it wasn't what they expected, but there would be a huge shift in consciousness in the entire planet. I didn't know what this meant. And um, I asked the higher dimensional beings, I said, so what is going to be this event in the sky that everybody's going to see? Is it going to be fleets of spaceships? That's what I was hoping. And to my surprise, they said, no, it's going to be a series of solar waves that will hit the earth. And they actually called them solar waves of love that will hit the earth. And these intense waves of love will shift the consciousness of the entire planet up. And so the end result of that, it, you know, people ask questions, well, what about the, the evildoers? Well, um, what's going to happen is that they will lose all of their power. Because uh, the people who are running the world only have power if we give it to them consciously uh, with our minds or with our votes or with our money or with our physical support. And so when enough people will wake up, they will stop giving their power and their allegiance to the current system that's running the world. And so it's going to be a very peaceful uh, takeover and it's unavoidable. It's inevitable. There's no way around it. You know, this has been prophesied in, you know, the, the Mayans prophesied it, the Hopis prophesied it, Christians prophesied it. Um, you know, you'll see this everywhere. Just about every spiritual tradition, even the ones that I don't agree with, are saying basically the same thing. It might have a different spin on it, but it's going to be the end of corruption and the beginning of heaven on earth. So uh, we talked recently about... Um, that it was one of these solar events that coincided with the extinction of the Neanderthals and the rise of human beings. So this is how evolution works. It's always in a big shift, a big jump. It's not gradual. It's not A plus B plus C. It's all of a sudden one day it's A and the next day it's Z. So uh, this is what we are experiencing. And um, I want to tell you, for those of you who are maybe having some challenging feelings that are coming up, a lot of people, the, the energy hits you and you, you'll have, everybody will have, uh, you know, different reactions to it. People will have a lot of feelings. They may have a lot of physical sensations, but depending on where you are in your personal shift and evolution will determine the kinds of feelings that you have. A common feeling is a feeling of anxiety. Now, anxiety can turn into fear. Anxiety can turn into obsession. Anxiety can turn into anger. Because what anxiety, anxiety just means that you, you're not sure what's happening. And so we tend to try and take control. So whatever it is you do to control, some people, they'll drink themselves into a stupor. Some people will indulge in depression. Other people will get really angry. Other people will act out. You know, there's, there's going to be, you know, more protests and violence. And then there's going to be people acting in strange ways. And then there are going to be people who are going to um, flow with this energy. And they will uh, feel a higher state of bliss. You might... Um, you know, I experienced this, uh, I think at the beginning of this storm, I don't remember exactly when it was, but when the, when this storm started to hit, I found myself just really just buzzed and high, like I, you know, taken the best, you know, just like eating a, a bunch of mushrooms or something, because what these experiences can do, if you're aligned with it, is it will release DMT. This is why people who take um, hallucinogens that, that um, forcibly introduce DMT into the system, like ayahuasca, mushrooms, 
Um, what ends up happening is that um, the DMT actually acts as a gateway. Now, I am not advocating the use of hallucinogens because they can be uh, destructive. And the truth is they're unnecessary now. You don't need them now. We needed them before. And um, we don't need them now um, because these events are going to act uh, like that. You're going to have to get your energy up to be able to meet that. And we'll talk about that a little later. I talk about it all the time. But what is also happening is that during these events, so, you know, if you want to start watching the solar weather forecasts, because there's plenty of them out there, um, you can start planning, you know, when you're going to do some deep meditation, um, you know, be aware that when these events hit, because instead of being caught off guard and finding yourself depressed or angry or anxious or afraid, you can know, okay, some solar energy is going to hit. There's a good chance that I'm going to be shifted out of my normal consciousness and um, I'm going to want to, to face that. So what is happening is when you feel, for instance, if you feel anxiety, it means that you're being shifted out of your attachment to the lower vibration of the third dimension. And it is only normal for us to be uncomfortable because that, you know, we've trained ourselves to survive in that. So your nervous system, your brain, your emotions, your psyche have all been trained to keep yourself at a certain level. Look, there's a lot of people on my channel who have challenges in life. And I, I feel for you. I've had no shortage of challenges in my life. And, you know, if you've gone through trauma in your life, if you're somebody who can feel and see that you live in a 3D prison, you've been aware for years that there are, you know, the, the elite or whatever you want to call it, controlling the world, controlling politics, controlling the media, and you feel victimized by this, that is perfectly understandable. But that feeling of victimization, that feeling of powerlessness is actually a self-defense mechanism that allows you to stay vibrating. This is the ironic thing. You may consciously know you don't like it here. You may consciously know that you belong in a higher vibrational state. You're, you're a starseed. You're a, an empath. You're a spiritual practitioner. Whatever it is, you can feel it. You can sense it. But what's ironic about it is that the anger that comes up, the hopelessness that comes up, the depression that comes up, the anxiety that comes up is actually your body and your psyche trying to pull you down so that you will fit in. So this is the difference between conscious and unconscious. You can be consciously very spiritual and unconsciously very... Um, very lower vibrational. So the thing to do is when that it, when this energy hits is to do meditations. If you have a deity that you pray to, do prayers where you ask to where you die to yourself and you release. This is something that we're working on. Uh, those of you who are working with me in the sixth phase of. Uh, Evolution. Sorry, I'm trying to hear this. Those of you who are working with me on the six phase ascension process, this is uh, something that I'm doing. Uh, it's covered up right here, but you go to thunderwizard.com and you can subscribe for this kind of apprenticeship. And so what's happening with people who I'm working with is I'm helping them learn how to surrender, to become conscious of their self-defense mechanisms that are actually working against you and learn how to go deeper within and feel the fear, feel the discomfort. And what will happen again when this energy hits, see, here's another very ironic thing. I learned this years ago when I was, uh, I was dating somebody that was actually a, a, a soulmate of mine. She's unfortunately passed on, but she was definitely a soulmate of mine. And I had never felt such a degree of unconditional love in my life. 
Now you'd think, oh, great, you found your soulmate and unconditional love. Well, then everything must have been rosy from the beginning. Actually, I resisted it and I acted out until one day she came to me and she said, you know, if, if you don't want to do this, just let me know. And I thought about it and I went, whoa, what am I doing? I was acting out out of anxiety and fear because I had never felt that level of unconditional love before. And it was a threat to my current um, self-protection mechanism. And so I had to surrender. So here's the thing about trust. People say, how can I learn to trust? And understand that trust is not a feeling. Trust is an action. Trust is an assumption. Trust is when you feel unsafe and you want to take action to rebel against, to run away from whatever the situation is. And instead of doing that, you choose to relax into it and to trust. Another example for me, I got to get on a plane in uh, a couple of days because in order to keep my visitor's visa, I have to leave the country every 90 days. So I'm going to jump on a plane overnight and come back and I run the risk every time I do that of having somebody stop me and say hey what are you doing you know because they want to see you leave for months at a time so I, I run a risk every time I do that and it's frightening to me and I could really get into some fear except for the fact that I've been given so much evidence and so many messages telling me that you know I'm going to live here for the rest of my life so I'm choosing to trust. Now I'm doing things to help myself out. And now I'll talk about the energy practice. I'm doing this mantra here, which is a mantra to Ishana Shiva, who is the Jupiterian vibration of Shiva, which has to do with a powerful sense of self. The true Ishana Shiva has to do with your true spiritual identity. And so I've been chanting that mantra. I teach that to you in the Jupiter transit video Ong Lang Vang Rang Yang Hang Ishanaya Hung. So I've been chanting that. I've also been doing interdimensional um, meditation and shamanic travel to Jupiter, which has been very helpful. So I'm taking contrary action, action that is contrary to what all of my fears want to do. So if you want to if you want to really make it in this solar wave ascension event, you're going to have to accept the idea that it's time to surrender. There's no shortage of people out there talking about ascension symptoms. Those ascension sim symptoms are accurate, but here's one of the problems. These are people, as I look at them, most of them, I don't get the sense that they've had any real therapy or counseling or done any real guided work looking at their shadow side. They've been doing it all by themselves. And the problem is when your thinking isn't um, going well and you try to fix your thinking with your thinking, your thinking still stays screwed up. So these are the people who end up having all kinds of physical problems, emotional problems, psychological problems, and they blame it on ascension symptoms. But what's really happening is that they are reacting negatively to this incredibly high vibrational love which is what it is. I know from personal experience. Now, I've been doing everything I just mentioned for 40 years. And when these high vibrational solar energies hit me, lots of times my first reaction is to be filled with anxiety and fear. And I start indulging in, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Where am I going to go? I just spent all kinds of money. The whole world is falling apart. You know, that's my, that's my uh, self-protection um, response. So I've learned to go, oh, I'm having that anxiety again. And I relax into it. And instead I chant my mantra and I surrender. I give myself over. I die to myself. I die to those feelings of fear. And so what ends up happening is that there will be an initial re resistance where my Insides will, will not want to, you know, you're not going to, you know, somebody said, uh, you know, a misunderstand, a misunderstanding of this truth. Somebody said, why would I worship any deity? I'm not going to give my energy away. But um, that's not what it is. You're surrendering 
and you're releasing your lower attachments. And it's frightening. It is a death. It's what Odin went through on the Tree of Life. Odin sacrificed himself to himself. He died to his false ego. And as a result, the secrets of the universe, which uh, one of the names for that is runes, appeared to him. And then screaming, it says, he took up the secrets of the universe. Meaning it was not an easy thing. It was challenging. It was frightening. He acted contrary to his fears. So the one easy thing you can do is when that anxiety hits, breathe and relax into it. Now, what happens for me now is I can instantaneously shift. The anxiety will hit. Um, I can feel the, elect the electrical energy flowing through me and I know what's going on. And instead, I just breathe and I relax. And that anxiety is actually shifting me up to a very high level of bliss. I can feel my crown chakra open. I can feel my heart open. And being in that bliss is in the state of unknown. Because you're shifting to another dimension. So, of course, things aren't going to be, you're not going to know what's going on. So you have to get, get used to the fact that you're not going to know what's going on. And here's how you know you're making the shift well. You might feel frightened. You might feel uncomfortable. But you're healthier, you're happier, and you're more prosperous. Stop and take a look at your objective life. Go, wait, my, my objective life is actually good. I just don't feel comfortable. And so you have to learn to then look at things objectively. This is the opposite of indulging it, going and drinking all night or doing drugs or indulging in fear mentality or watching, you know, uh, political stuff on YouTube and getting yourself full of the fear. That is indulging in it. And, it's, and you, when you do that, you end up making yourself unhealthy, you're unhappy, and you start losing prosperity. You, you, you're not able to take care of yourself. And all that does is create a self-referencing, you know, spiral where things get worse. You feel, uh, you feel justified in your victim mentality, which creates more destruction in your life, which justifies it. So you have to do the opposite. When you feel like everything's falling apart, you reach out. You reach out to, your, to whatever it is that you do. God, Buddha, Jesus, I don't care what it is. Or to your own higher self. I honestly don't care. Your angels, your guides, uh, higher dimensional beings, ETs, whatever it is that you work with. Having said that, um, it's also good to take a look at when these storms are going to hit. Because those are the times that you're going to have the most powerful experience with higher dimensional beings, if you are doing interdimensional meditation or what people call CE5. If you don't know what CE5 is, Google it. CE, the number five, protocol, and then do it. This is also going to be the time when you're most likely to see uh, some kind of um, anomalous activity where you're going to see who knows what, some kind of spiritual experience where something pokes its head through a dimensional gateway. Um, you can also do what I call interdimensional meditation, which is instead of you know looking for something physically, we go inward and we meditate and we travel to different places. Um, I've got on the channel a an interdimensional meditation to Jupiter. I recommend that you do this because uh, this is when Jupiter is waking up. So. The one thing that has been told to me by my higher dimensional friends is that they are most able to communicate with us when the electromagnetic field is low and or when the solar radiation is high. The reason why the electromagnetic field keeps out solar radiation, that's basically its main function. So, but that electromagnetic activity is where higher dimensional energy can come in. So whether it's, you know, the, uh, the electromagnetic field is, is low or there's a lot of um, 
solar energy hitting the earth, those are the times when higher dimensional beings are able to interact and you can hear them and experience them. So plan on those days to do your interdimensional meditation. If you don't know what that is, you can go to thunderwizard.com and subscribe to the Warrior 90 Day Lightning Qigong. Or you can do the free guided interdimensional meditations I have on the free YouTube channel. I also recommend that you get my book, Interdimensional Revolution, which you can find on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible. There's also Extraterrestrials Are Coming to Earth. And um, what I'm being told, and now my experience is backing this up, is that what we're experiencing is a continuous solar wave event that is going to increase. My, If I'm interpreting the messages coming to me correctly, the all of this is going to start increasing drastically. So be prepared. Everything is going to start to change. You're going to start seeing all kinds of crazy things happening in the world. I mean, Fox News got rid of Tucker Carlson, you know, their biggest, you know, money maker. They got rid of him. <laughs> what was that all about? Um, you're going to be seeing all kinds of things happening politically. You're going to be seeing scandals. You're going to be seeing truth exposed. Things that you've been told over the past two to three years, you're going to find are going to be completely flipped on its head. You're going to see, um, you know, the space programs, both Elon Musk and uh, Jeff Bezos, their, their rockets are blowing up. So, you know, the elites who are trying to populate space, you know, uh, space is saying, nah, no, you're not going to do that. We're going to see the end of society as we understand it. Banking is going to go away. Politics is going to go away. We're going to see the end of military. But there's going to be a lot of chaos before all that happens. So be prepared. Your best protection is to be doing interdimensional meditation. If you can, do it on a daily basis. And when you do that, you will then be letting the higher dimensional beings know that you want an upgrade. So the solar wave event is an upgrade for the entire planet and all the species on it. But if you haven't volunteered for that upgrade, it's going to be challenging. There are some people, I myself don't know what I believe about this, because free will does, uh, does have a stake in this. But there are a lot of people who believe that people who do not consciously make the choice or consciously make the choice to stay in a lower dimensional state, there's, we've heard that they won't make it to the next level. And I'm wondering, is this what happened to the, to the Neanderthals? Do Neanderthals exist on a lower vibrational essence of Earth? And will normal human beings stay on this lower vibrational essence of Earth if they choose not to, to level up? So you can choose to level up now. You don't have to wait. Because for the first time in history, higher dimensional beings, which we perceive as extraterrestrials, these higher dimensional beings are parked around Earth like never before, just outside of our dimensional reality. And they're, they got their hand up and they're wanting to help you up. Now, the way that they do that is not by abducting you. Those are 3D aliens. That's not extraterrestrials. The way higher dimensional beings help you out is by connecting with you on a meditation level. They connect with you in between the dimensions, which you can only access through a conscious choice to meditate on it. And when you meditate on wanting to connect with them on a higher dimensional level, they meet us in between the dimensions. They give us energy. And in, in essence, you're poking a hole in between the third and the fifth dimension. And what will happen is your energy will begin to shift. If you interact with higher dimensional beings, this solar radiation, when it hits, will actually start flipping on switches in your dormant DNA. This is an evolutionary shift. The children that are born after this shift are going to be different. They're going to have a different DNA than we did. So, you know, if you're, uh, you know, like me, I was born in the 60s, I'm going to have to get an upgrade. 
So that upgrade is energetic, it's spiritual, psychological, and it's your DNA. But you have to choose it. And so just know that you might go through some challenges. I teach you how to handle those challenges in my channel, especially my book, The Shamanic Secret Commandment to a Perfect Life. I, I, uh, I recommend that you get that. I also do it in the Manifestation Mastery course, which you can get um, here at thunderwizard.com. Um, all of that stuff teaches you how to choose to live on a higher dimensional plane, how to um, act contrary to your self-defense, victim mentality, fear, depression, anger. You learn how to tolerate those feelings and act consciously, which is really the definition of enlightenment, acting consciously even when you don't feel like it. And um, I give you the tools to even help you further, which is these energy practices. Uh, the lightning qigong is the only practice in the world that I know of that stimulates kundalini as well as qi, as well as the lightning force of the heart, which is the most powerful energy which destroys negativity and your own self-negativity. So there it is, my friends. Uh, we'll see what happens. According to uh, the latest, the storm has just ended, like just a few hours ago. But they say, we don't know. Let's keep our fingers crossed to see what happens. But this is just the beginning. Every time one of these, store, these, these solar storms hits the earth, the earth bumps up a little bit and will never go back to where it was. People's consciousness is raised and it will never go down. And um, it might not have risen to their conscious awareness yet, but people are starting to wake up more and more and more. So when this shift happens, in my video that I'm, I'm just putting up today, um, the people who are really getting themselves in tune to this new reality that's coming into, into our manifestation, those are going to be the people who are going to run the world. People who are filled with greed, anger, fear, violence they if they're still here they will no longer be you know top dog anymore and you know like the i'm not a i'm not a jesus person but one quote of his the meek shall inherit the earth meaning the spiritually open the um uh, the spiritually aware the uh sensitive to spirituality those are the people who are going to rise to the top very quickly you want to be one of those people Get a head start. Do the lightning qigong. Do the interdimensional meditation. And um, all of the tools here are available to you. You can see all of my books at Michael William Denny, D E N N E Y.com. Michael William Denny.com. And um, of course, uh, all of the links here. Check them all out. I'm also on Rumble, where I do my more spicy stuff that I can't stay, say on YouTube. Um, so you can subscribe to me there. Subscribe, like, comment and share this with your friends. All right, that's it. I wish you guys all the best. I will see you all very soon.